Hey, let's get down to it, Bopper. Oh, buddies, it's the Ron and Faye Show, Thursday, December 5th, 2013. Artist of the Day, the great Paul Simon. Oh, it's a call in radio show, the Ron and Faye Show, 866 Ron Zero Fez, 866 Ron Zero Fez. Um, I know a lot of people are curious about a lot of stuff, but I'll only say this. And by the way, thanks to uh, Handsome Johnny Tube Steaks for being in here with the Clark Kent glasses. He looks amazing. <laughs> Seriously, it's the best God. fucking look a man can have. Sir? It makes you seem uh, less of a sexual deviant. <laughs> I feel it's in the other direction. The glasses are like... Really? Yeah. It divides the crowds. They're not fucking shades. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's a dealer. He's coming in with those Clark Kents on, and girls are like, you know what? I know he has a reputation, but he seems nice. Oh, I'm going to let my guard down. Yeah. See, that's rapist talk, Johnny. <laughs> We all know how that went down. <laughs> um, so anyway, I know everybody's curious about the show yesterday and all the stuff that went down with Fez. Uh, I will only say the real show was last night. Whew. Weirdest night of my life. Oh my, I can't even Weirdest imagine. night of my life. After yesterday's on air show. Uh, and I don't, you know, everybody, there was a, a certain point where things settled down uh, and then, you know, it was almost like put a pin in it with the bosses who go back and forth, I think, from being incredibly nice to incredibly naive. You know what I mean? Because I'm sorry, I'm... This isn't my fucking first trip to the rodeo. So when the things start, you know, maybe if we do this and that. Um, but the the funny part was then this morning I get a call. I guess somewhere during ONA's Ron and Fez Sports Center. Whew. Back crazy. And I'm like, look, I know we were saying, you know, come back in today until we figure. But he... Too, just too much. This is actually, you know, I, I won't speak for Fez at all, but for my part of it, I am so now finally saying I'm over my, I'm over my head with all this stuff. I'm not very good at this stuff. It's gone on for a long time. This just seems like. See, this is one of the things that he was saying that you kiss up to me. Really? You're, like you don't come up with a solution. You just shadow me and say what I... That, I'm no therapist. That is one of his... But it's one thing to be his therapist, but he's saying that you're just shadowing my opinions and it's driving him crazy. He says paranoia talk. He feels sometimes like it's, you know... Him against the world? Well... Or me? You. That, <laughs> that, I'm trying to think of the word. I think it might have been Greek chorus. Okay. And then the bosses are taking that as if this is a sensible thing. Where we're like, well, what if Chris would just... And I'm like, I... You, you act like you've never heard the show before, or maybe you never listened as much, but this isn't... This isn't a tweaking thing. Um, here's... Uh, let's go over and... We'll open up the phones now. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Um, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Now... Uh, Susie Espen uh, stopping in a little bit. Yep. I don't have her plug sheet in front of me, but I believe she's going to play Gotham. Yeah, she's at Gotham uh, this weekend. Playing Gotham uh, uh, this weekend, the 6th and 7th. That's in New York City. Go to GothamComedyClub.com uh, to hook up with her. Uh, Jose, you're on the Run of Fest show. What's up, Ronnie B? What's yeah. up, Chris? Brown, Elzer Hicks? How you doing? You're a dick. <laughs> Why not just listen to stuff, at, uh, you know, Hicks, instead of just leaping out? Go ahead, Jose. Hey, man, Ronnie B., I just want to tell you how much you appreciate it, man. I love the show. love you guys. You know, hope everything goes good. Um, who you got tonight in tonight's uh, sorry football game? Who you like tonight? 
I haven't even. I don't know who's tonight's game. You right. it's Jacksonville and Houston. Wow, that's going to be a big one. Um, Texans at Jaguars. I was actually reading an article today where the NFL players are saying, "Please stop the uh, the Thursday night games. Our bodies hurt, and if we get that Thursday night game, we don't have enough time to recover." Well, yeah, that's <laughs> three days of rest and to, to prep for the next game. Impossible. It's basically like saying you've been in a car accident and three <laughs> days to heal and then your next car accident. So anyone past the age of 26 is starting to struggle <laughs> with this. Um, I guess. I say Jacksonville keeps their streak alive. They're plus three and a half, <laughs> Jacksonville. Um, I'm hoping, I'm a Texan fan. I'm hoping we're trying to get the first pick. We might get, you know, we're trying to get Winston now. You know what I mean? The quarterback. If he doesn't get convicted. <laughs> Um, speaking of convictions, I guess today is the FSU guy finds out whether or not he gets charged. Yeah. And if he does, he may be off the team the second he gets charged. Oh yeah, they'll they'll, they'll just they'll just they're gonna put him in the dirt. He's done if he if he gets. Why would it. the college do that though? And to to just to show that they won't you know they're not they're not accepting of any of this it's weird FSU, behavior. FSU, dude. Are you fucking familiar with this <laughs> school at all? They normally go in the opposite direction, but this could also ruin any chances he has uh, for the Heisman. So um, that story will be out today. Here's uh, Chris in Maine. You're on the Run of Fez show. Ronnie, I was glued to the goddamn radio yesterday and couldn't wait for today. I was wondering if you guys were going to come back laughing at us with Fed saying this was to pay off to a five-year bet, you asshole. Uh, that would be amazing. We would be the fucking greatest show that ever lived <laughs> if we could pull that off. But the the weirdness is, and I get, you know, that a train wreck would be interesting to other people, but it's really weird when it's your train wreck. And the weirdness of talking with the bosses about show and life and blah you know what i mean like you know at a certain point you're like you're not a psychologist you know that's what i'm saying you're not a fucking therapist you have these ideas and i'll go then i actually and the person who was very very nice through all this is don and i'll put wiki wicklin and the weird thing about wiki he's the only one who calls himself wiki and sometimes he acts like he's got a turntable and he's like, wiki, 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 when he comes into a room. And he also uh, does like a little heart over the eye. But he starts saying how he's, this is going to be his response, Fez would be his responsibility. And, but, and I go, okay, dude, but that's 24 fucking hours a day. And then I'm, you know, I don't think people get it. I, I will uh, Again, we got Susie Essman coming in a little bit, and I want to get to that. And hopefully by, you know, tomorrow, so we'll go in some direction and stop boring people with this shit. But the weirdness for me, and this is a total shoot, and I don't even know how to explain it. But I figured out last night that by the time my kids were three, they were not as dependent on my approval as Fez is. That no matter what happens in life, he needs to see it through this prism of what I think or know. And somehow we can't even have an argument like regular people. Because he will, I was going through this last night, and I don't have that point of reference. I don't know if anyone has a point of reference. The only other way I can think about it is if you've ever had like a dog, like a nice dog, who when you come home, and if you're sad, they're sad, and if you're angry, they're angry. Like, it's uh, dawning on me how much... Fez's emotions are caught up into my emotions. And he can't tell what I'm doing. Sarcasm. He can't tell. You know, and I'm not a nice person anyway. So if Chris 
does something good, I'll go one day in a row, you didn't fuck something up. <laughs> and that's like a compliment for me <laughs> because I don't, you know. Well, yeah, it makes me feel good, though. You know, that's that one day. It feel good. It's that one day. Um, Patrick, you're on the Run of Fez show. Turn your radio down, dude. I got to get somebody on the phones in there. They can teach Patrick in Delaware how to turn down the radio. Um, Greg in Texas, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ronnie B. Yeah. Hey, man, I've been listening to you guys forever. The dynamic has changed so much. I mean, you guys are basically doing reality radio now. That's not what I ever wanted to fucking do. That's the weird thing about it. I want to do a comedy radio show. I certainly don't want to open up my life to the world and be like a fucking, I don't know, a, a Kardashian or some shit. Um, hey, Bill, you're on Ronnie Fez. Hey, Ronnie, I was just curious. Do you think that maybe the reason Fez has never had a relationship is because in his mind, he feels like he's in one with you, and he just can't move on from that point. And maybe uh, obviously, that's why a lot of people have come up with this theory. Yeah. That somehow Fez doesn't have sex or even be in a relationship because it feels like he's cheating on me. And this came up with um, Johnny Mac and Tim and Wiki. And I had to, I, I literally said, do you realize that if you were to do this, what you're saying, if I was a woman, I could sue the fucking company. This is crossing any kind of lines. That the things that you are saying are above your fucking pay grade. And if they're true, then I would need protection from the company or I would have a lawsuit. But this, this is what I'm saying. This is where my life has gotten now. A person that has always considered himself somewhat private, people feel free to say stuff like this to me. And I'm fucking bananas from it. Now, the weird thing is, um, you, you have people that just feel like they know after just a, a, a couple of minutes. Um... All right, Pat finally f- fixed this thing. Pat, you're on the Run Fez show. Ron, how you doing today? Yeah. This should uh, definitely clear your mind that uh, you don't have to have all the extra m- emotional baggage. But something we all need to know out here is what was the present you got for Christmas? All right, see, that's so the, yeah. All right, the reason. And how many years ago is this now? Three? Uh, Yeah, three years ago. This, the fucking weirdness of that is that I should have known then that our relationship was weirder than I thought. And the fact that I pushed it away is probably my fault. But why should I, you know what I mean? Why should I have to think of any of these things? That's the fucking point that I am now. I will tell you this, and I've said this to the bosses. I've done more radio than I will do radio now. You know what I mean? I'm at that point in my life where I got my shit fucking wired and I should only be doing things for fun and enjoyment or move on to another project. That's where my life should be. This should be me saying, I don't have a job. I'm doing things because I want to. You know? Yeah. So the fact is, Chris... You got to come in here and hit it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I've done that. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is me being able to say, oh, yeah, that interview came up. Yeah, I'll do that one. Or no, I don't want to do that. It's like when I go through the unmasked, I pick people that I'm actually interested in. And we turn down far more people. Because why uh, Why do it? Um, Tony, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, how's it going today, Ron? Yeah. I've been listening to you since, like, the JFK days. And I've noticed that Ron, or Fez has done this, especially since all of his breakdown stuff started. And I know everybody said he's in love with you, but I don't think it's really... Oh, God. Right. Every time somebody gets close to you, he starts to panic. He did it with Dave. I mean, Dave never did anything to Ron Fez except love and respect him. 
and, and then right near the end there, he was accusing Dave of trying to come between you guys and steal the show. Then Dave Luckton says got a little bit better. Then there was a couple interns there that got a little close to you, and he got all pissy with them. Like and popcorn. And, you know, and now he's doing it with Chris Stanley. I, I don't think he can handle the fact that anybody could be good on the show with you, and he just can't deal with that. This is the weird thing that I'm pointing out to you and I pointed out to the company. I'm not a fucking soap opera character. I am not a reality show character. I don't want to be one. The fact that people can sit around and comfortably state... Break this whole situation down. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. So, um... I don't know. The deal is that we are going to... Um, work something out um obviously today was going to be that but there's some kind of a setback i think he's going to show up here later either on this show which i don't know whether that's even a good idea because tom rhodes is going to come in here and he got very fucking crazy about tom uh yesterday and last night and i honestly haven't seen tom in six years and probably twice in fucking ten. So to think that, I don't know, some old friend of mine is in town. Uh, he's doing something with uh, Dave Vitell. Wants to stop by here. He wanted me to do his podcast because every fucking comic has to have a podcast now. Um, that became a major issue. Yeah, when he started, I mean, the first time I heard him talk about Tom was yesterday. We start throwing it out. It came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. But this is the weirdness that I'm in last night with the bosses, where people are going like this. Well, do you tell Fez that you care? And I'm like, I thought this was work. Because, you know, and they're saying, well, in a lot of ways, this is more like a marriage. And I go, you know what? If this was a marriage, I would have been fucking long gone. I would never take this from a chick. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Um, Brad, you're on the Run of Fez show. So, Ronnie, this is just uncomfortable to talk about, but I don't know how you explain that Fez is your crazy pussy. See? It's just weird. I don't know. Shower Bench says there actually was a payoff yesterday that made the last eight years off worthwhile when all it had to do was win it off, off the rails and I ended up saying, Fez, there's no such thing as plastic paper. Or bullets in your pocket. Uh, Jody in Canada, you're on the run of Fez show. Hey, Ron, I've actually just been listening to you guys for about six months now. And what it seems to me, I listened to you guys yesterday, is that uh, it's like you breast, you're the, you're the mother and you breastfed Fez. Fed, see, this is uncomfortable for me. I haven't <laughs> breastfed him. I'm not his mother. We're two guys that work together. This doesn't happen with other fucking shows. And no one else is being, th that's not being put on them. Um, I guarantee you, you don't run into other people that have these kind of uh, problems. Joe, you're on the Run of Fez show. What's that? Yeah, Joe. Yeah, um, I've been listening for a couple of years, and, and I think you called him when he did stuff. Remember when he went and he, he, he walked down when that dude was playing piano or some shit? Oh, the guy, the drummer. Uh, HWK. Yeah, your idol. Love him. Jump in the camera, and he was the weird guy in the back. Like that was clearly the happiest I've like seen you guys as a group. But you you would call him like stunt boy, like, and I didn't think it was that. I thought that was just him doing like playing his part. I guess. Yeah, and but go back and listen to that, and you are right that he was at his happiest because I was telling him each thing to do. I was saying, pull up your shirt. Tap your head. 
And for some reason, that made him incredibly happy. And that's the weirdness, that you try to work out why somebody feels comfortable, more comfortable with that than having a conversation. That if I would say to him, Fez, paint your ass red and then go down fucking town and start throwing eggs at the Wall Street guys, <laughs> he would leave and do it. As if it was hypnosis. And this is the shit that we were trying to talk about last night. And the thought of us not continuing in the exact same way as we're doing now. Not even like, hey, what if we just did something? No. It would be the end of his life is the way he was explaining it. And then I got that to worry about. Because I've known him forever. I've known him my whole adult life. And I really have been on this path for this long. And I've been on this, you know, trip with this dude for a long time. But it's starting to feel like two guys on a desert island and one just starts going bad shit. <laughs> and he's the funniest son of a bitch ever when he wants to be. But he's just given this up for whatever this other weirdness that we're into. But obviously I can't be, I, I would not be able to feel like a comfortable person if something happens to him. And that's the other fucking weirdness that I get. So that when all the people are like, you got to do this, you got to drop it. No, I can't also feel responsible for a guy that I, you know, I mean, him coming to New York was my idea. You know what I mean? I said, we're going to go up there. I talked to Jeremy Coleman. We're going to go into New York. They're doing this new talk radio station. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They basically got O&A and a mess up there. Let's go. And um, that does make me responsible in a lot of ways. You know? That is a, that is a true fact that... It was my idea. Um, all right, you're on the Ronnie Fez show. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, uh, I just wanted to basically comment. I mean, I've been listening to you guys for a very, very long time, both you and ONA is the reason I have, to have XM radio. But uh, over that time period, the amount of professionalism and the amount of entertainment that you have provided with Fez it has been nothing but just short of great. But the thing that I don't, that I trip over is the amount of support that you have given him that I, that, that I see on the radio, you know, day in and day out, you know, for all the years. And the amount of support that you probably give to him off the radio, which I have, wouldn't need to have another concept of. I, what I heard yesterday it, it was a tipping point to me to say, you're at a loss. I don't, you, you got like no moves left. I mean, I, I, I would agree like, with that. And I it, tried to say that as people were giving me advice yesterday and last night, a lot of it inappropriate advice. I'm not good at this. I'm not a caretaker. I'm not a good person. I, you know, um, I don't even know where to go. I don't even know where to go with it. I was listening to some O&A today and like, you know, I was like laughing at some things and cringing so much. And finally I had to say to myself, I'm going to go back and listen to this later. <laughs> I can't do it now. And, uh, I'm not used to feeling that kind of weird, you know, exposure. I've always fucking taken care of my own shit, you know, and I've never been the uh, attention whore kind of guy. And supposedly this is all coming to a boil because by Friday, tomorrow, we were going to make an announcement of some kind. Again, say whatever you want about the bosses. They were at least coming up with some very interesting options some together some apart maybe even taking time off 
all that stuff has Fez in a tizzy, as if we're saying you'll be getting a shot and dying right after that. Uh, Susie has been stopping in in just uh, a little bit. Looking forward to talking to her. Uh, you know Susie from maybe the funniest show of all time. Yeah, yeah, it's right there. Curb Your Enthusiasm, uh, where she screamed at uh, Jeff Garland for many, many years. <laughs> um, so she'll be coming up in just a couple of uh, months. Um, here's uh, here's Darren. Darren, you're on the Run of Fest show. Hey, Ron. Yeah. I don't know where to start with this, uh, but um, I, I want to say I, I think the majority of us see the path you're trying to go down, and, and it's I don't even know the dude, of course, but and he's starting to piss me off because of I, you know, I want the entertainment you're trying to give, and they, like they hear you I on O and A. I, you know? I am fucking f- afraid. Like a rope, freight. I actually just said coming up in a couple of months for my guest. Why would anyone want to hang on for a couple of months <laughs> to hear Susie Espen come in? It's a couple of minutes. And Chris is writing it down. Yeah, now, instead of saying it into a microphone. Yeah, she's, how fucking hard is that, Chris? Not hard I at all. I asked you time and time again. Say it into the microphone. Hey, CJ, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. Hey, Pepper's up to no good. I'm telling you, he's undermining Fez. Fez has a little... little There's no him. fucking really? doubt, and that's also yeah. being exposed. Me, I've, I've never undermined Fez, ever. Well, you're being talked about, dude. Why is my name being brought up? Why not? <laughs> Austin, you're on the Run of Fez show. Ronnie, yeah. um, I hate to bring this up again. I just wanted to say that uh, moving forward, I wish you the best of luck. And if this is the end of Ron and Fez, I know you're going to come back with a million bucks, whatever uh, incarnation you bring it back in. Um, I was just curious, is uh, Peppa Stanley going to be there with you? There's nothing that has been worked out at all in any direction. Chris yeah. has his dreams. You don't really want to be a producer. You want to be a... Uh, show host, right? That'd be nice one to one day. I'm, that's what I'm working towards. I feel um, management here couldn't disagree with you more. Oh, <laughs> that hurts. And I, why not lay it out? Everything's being laid out. Mm-hmm. Um, also, Pepper, I wanted to let you know that guy yesterday who said your character was weak and suck my gooch. <laughs> oh, Thanks for the. That's where Chris is at his strongest. <laughs> I'm gonna send that. To, can I send this to management? <laughs> let that guy know. If I could pick a show to do in my life right now, it would be the Ron and Susie Espen show, because that's the kind of discussions I wish to be in. You see that she wasn't sitting around. She didn't freak out about anything. And also, and no offense to you, yeah. she didn't speak like, yeah, 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 you're right, because that other thing, that the, I don't really understand it, but I'm just agreeing the whole time. <sighs> Catholic Joe brought this up to me. Chris Stanley does a hell of a lot of agreeing. Yeah, I've noticed that. Really? And you said, when you work on the Catholic Channel, you try to have your own opinions sometimes. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I go with the flow. But most of the times I have my own opinion. I have plenty. I don't know what Catholic Joe's coming. How come you never spare. come up with one off the top of your head? And also, I just got signed a deal. It's serious. I'm hosting my own show next week. What? No, that's a lie. But oh, I just I wanted really... to make Pepper jealous. Pepper, that would be great. You, you can. I'll sign you on as a special guest. Though. <laughs> great guest star. Uh, yeah. Featuring? Featuring you. I'd like to see both of you guys doing a show called Good Morning Israel. <laughs> Bombs again. Charlie, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hi, how are you? I just tuned in. You guys are leaving? No one knows what anybody's doing, Charlie. I, just, I can't... I couldn't possibly catch you up on everything. Um... Tommy, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, I just started listening to you guys about two weeks ago, and I heard all the commotion about leaving, staying, or what have you. I was just wondering if Fez was in today. No, Fez is taking a day off for himself. Um, last night got very, very bad. Very fucking bad. As bad as it's ever gotten. And it yeah, got no, very, it very weird. Shit. And this is real. This wasn't that wasn't just no. guys yelling at each other for for fun. Why would any? <laughs> that's not a show. What you heard was the breakdown of a show, not a show. It came down to this, and I've explained it a couple times. 
I don't mind explaining it to you because you're two weeks in. Fez and I have, our relationship has gotten very, very strange. Stranger than I even thought. What is expected out of me in our partnership is um, we have blurred the lines of work, family, and then whatever. Whatever you would call it. It's become unhealthy for both of us. Has Fez ever expressed like feelings of love past just like friendship love to you? Who the fuck are you to ask such questions? Seriously. <laughs> Why do people feel like they could ask me questions like that? That's the part of this that fucking completely freaks me out. Okay. And no, I'm going to say it once. I've said it a million times. No, he hasn't touched me or been inappropriate. But the fucking fact that people think that they can ask that of a man is amazing to me. Now, does any of that exist in Fez's mind? If he does, he hasn't figured it out. This is why Fez is in therapy. Um... Rob, Florida, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron, uh, you sound like a million bucks. Yeah. Big ass card number 26071. Oh, nice. Uh, I just wanted Ooh, to say I've been listening for uh, about 10 years and uh, love you guys. If it's the end, uh, you know, best of luck on whatever you guys do. And, Ronnie, if you want to start the Ron and Rob show, hey, man, let's do this. It would actually be an interesting thing to do the Ron and Rob show. So, Rob, I've never met you before. Uh, how are things in Florida? What's your deal? You're only going to be on the phone with me every day? Maybe I asked the end line. Rob, I'm going to put you on hold while Susie Espin comes in. Do I need to break, Chris? Yeah, let's break. I know you won't. You, you're not telling me. You're not writing it down. And this is another thing that's gotten weird, is that the bosses are like, is Chris think he's a co-host or think that he's a producer? Because he seems to be doing neither. Okay. I feel, I feel I'm doing both. I'm producer. This is why you don't learn things. Because you don't listen. You just say, no. What you say is just the opposite. That's why you stay confused about things. <laughs> Seriously, right now, the only person I feel I can talk to yeah. is Catholic Joe. What's up? See <laughs> how fucking easy it is? You know what I mean? I got that kind of thing with them. 62 degrees today. That's weird. I know. I feel like fucking calling off and just running outside. Right? Um, Andrew, you're on the Run of Fest show. Hey, Ronnie B. Just wanted to ask you, what are your top five favorite cigars, man? That's a great question, and I, I think I'm going to do that for Christmas cigars for the iBank. I'll do a top five, or at least I'll put a couple of us together to do it. Um... I want to do a lot more of stuff that we should be doing for Christmas up on the iBang uh, over the next couple of weeks. Nick in Kentucky, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron, how you doing? Hey, um, hey I'm all for equality, and, you know, if people want to have gay rights and all that stuff, that, that's fine an idea to me. But, like, the whole thing to me is still fairly new, and it's not a comfortable thing for me to, you know, to deal with, and I can probably understand the same with you. I think it's crazy that... That shit's even being brought up to, like, another man about feelings and, like, love and all that stuff. That's not normal. It's, it's really uncomfortable. Well, let me just say that if I was a woman, these things would have crossed lines. The question that Chris just asked would have been totally fucking inappropriate. And certainly I never expected to hear people feel so comfortable with me. To fucking sit and say stuff like that. Fez, whatever he has to work out, he's got to work out. I don't know if I can help. I don't see any way I can help. But I live in a world where everybody thinks I can help. The other fact of the matter is, and this is totally a shoot, is I don't know if I can live with myself if I say, go, just I'm or I'm leaving or you're going and having him be as upset as he was last night. 
What you heard on the air yesterday and you thought was uncomfortable was one one hundredth of what went down last night. I was exhausted by the end when I finally fell asleep. And when I woke up this morning, I had to fucking wonder, was that just a nightmare? Tomorrow we were going to make some kind of an announcement. I, 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 at some fucking point, I have to. And I still just even feel like a prick saying that stuff. I think every bit of this is my fault as much of his fess. Or maybe there's no fault at all. Maybe it's just how human beings are supposed to be confused about different things. But that be asked questions like Chris Stanley asked me, that's fucking crossing a line. To have my boss say to me, do you feel that Fez doesn't date because he's cheating on you? I feel like, guess what, dude? That fucking sounds like a lawsuit or fucking... Or hands throwing ready to happen. That's not the kind of question somebody says to somebody. How the fuck would I know any of that? That's goddamn craziness. Um, I got a break here. We'll be right back. We'll pick this up. Tommy Rhodes is coming in. As paranoid as that's got Fez, Tommy Rhodes will be here today. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit. It's the Ron Fez Show. Ron Bennington. Right, all right. Tez Wally. Yeah. This is the, the Ron and Fez Show. John, I'm sorry. Chris is going on and on. What is it that you called about? Uh, just to say that, Ron, you're, you have no culpability in any of this stuff. Don't even start. Oh, I do. I, you know, I don't think so. You can never be responsible for others' actions, feelings, or emotions. You can only be responsible for your own. Do you have family? I do, and I know, and I've thought about this, and I do have family that... You have brothers? I do. I do have brothers. Could I have, you ever I leave three. a brother behind? I would never leave a brother behind, but I would never say that I am the reason that they have a problem. If they said to you, please don't leave me behind, I will die without you, could you still walk away? No, absolutely Thank not. You. But it's still, you didn't create the problem. Whether I created the problem or not, it is now also mine. And I can't figure out how to fix it. I'm not smart enough. Well, that's not true. You're the smartest man I've ever heard. You say that. I am is sitting in this room. I'm the only one of us with only a high school education. That does uh, not matter. It doesn't matter. I'm self-educated, which means I'm an idiot for a fucking teacher, basically. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Craig, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron. Yeah. Hey, uh, I, I wanted to call earlier this week. Uh, the interview with Donald Fagan and Willem Dafoe, they were just great. That's that's the moments I really enjoy. But when it goes to the Groundhog Day stuff, I just turn it off and, you know, check back and see if you're doing something better. But you know what? You're kind of acting like a fucking rude, Ron. You know, just because, with no disrespect, but every time Fez sniffles or cries, you got to back down and, and say it's your responsibility. Think of Paul Ola's, his, his supposedly Fez's friend. He's squatting in a damn house in Florida. You think you'd have him come up there and spend some time with him? Hell no. I had a brother. Same thing. As long as I gave him money, he'd start crying if he didn't. I uh, finally had to cut him off. Guess what he did? He got a job and he moved on. Yeah, I know. But then again, I don't know. So uh, he, he's got to go home for it? Uh, I'm going to contact someone. Fuck him. Is that, is some, are we supposed to handle it or him? Uh, I, 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 I would have to handle it. No, you're on the run of Fez show. Noel. Yes, no. No, okay. Hey. I said no first, and there's oh, nothing yeah. back. Uh, I didn't hear you. My, my phone reception is great. Uh, well, I'm a I'm a therapist here in Indiana. I, I've heard you guys kind of talk a lot, and I, 
I've never heard you take this perspective uh, on it, but I was like, you, do you realize it's, it sounds a lot like you're in a codependent relationship with says? Well, see, this is a very interesting point because I've never thought of myself as codependent because I was always the alcoholic. I was always the center of fucking attention with my weirdness. But now I would guess that is codependence. I don't know. Yeah, he's not the alcoholic. He has his own like psychological right. and you know anxiety issues, and you got to come in and be the savior. And I mean, those key words, I'm I'm gonna die without you, and really, it's just kind of keeping you there and keeping you in, in that same type of relationship. So, you say you don't know what to do. I mean, look at it from a, you know, the thing is, I'm being codependent, and then how do I break that? You know, maybe you need to go from the AA meetings to the Al Anon meetings. I just never wanted to be one of those fucking people. I yeah, could never I stand those people. They were always the worst to me. You know? Oh. I really am like the um, the weird chick now. Uh, by tomorrow, this should be decided. Because it can't go on forever. At some point in the show tomorrow, we got to bring it up. I was just, um, during the break, both Wiki and Tim checked in with me. I don't know how helpful that is. I love that wiki. Yeah, wiki uh, is going to be back involved uh, with us pretty closely. It's a good thing. To plan a wedding. He's always good at that. We would have got that wedding done the last time. Gary oh, yeah. The ball on it. And you know what? That maybe could have changed everything. I know. Could have gotten Fed married off. It would have changed everything that we're at right now. I would now. have had somebody to take care of him, somebody else. You know, Chris does, you and him never talk at night, right? Ever. Never, no, never. Pepper's the least supportive of Fez out of anybody I know. Not only is he not supportive of Fez, he wasn't supportive of Pips and the problems that Pips went through. And I, here's what happens when we got Pips. I said, uh, because I had gotten Zito because I thought he was going to do something. Fucking Hicks was furious with me so much that I, I brought Zito in that he wouldn't even train Zito. But it was a quiet fury. He didn't do it to me, but he attempted to destroy the show and himself and to be very hurtful. So after that, you know, Pepper had talked about leaving one. So I go, look, you go get anybody that you want and I will be supportive. And it'll be your employee and not mine. And damn if that Pips ever took anything to Chris. He would go to Rob. He yeah. would go to Steve. He would sometimes go to me. You never had a relationship with him. It was very weird. I thought I did beforehand, but it turned out I didn't. It was very, very strange. He brought up to Rob when he was about illness things and not you. Yeah. He brought up to Rob when he had girlfriend things and not you. He brought up to Rob when he was ready to leave and not you. Yeah, I don't know why he wouldn't come to me, I guess. Because there's something awful about you. <laughs> is that it? Yeah. The only guy you support, Pep, is, is Ronnie, and you, you just pepper keep him, really. You're a, you're a dick. That's true. That's bullshit. I, I just heard Ronnie talking about it a little bit ago when I was listening, and I, I was just sitting there talking to my radio saying, yes, you're right. Um, here's Hill Billy Truth Bomb. You're on the Run Fest show. Hey, Ron, I just wanted to say, first off, I admire you for your loyalty. And you shouldn't feel bad about not knowing what to do. Nobody would know what to do in this situation. You've tried literally everything. And, of course, I'm only getting what's on the air, not what goes on behind the scenes. But from on the air, you've tried every tactic possible in this. None of it worked. Nobody would know what to do. I admire you for your loyalty. I don't know. If I got a guy like fucking Hard Rock Johnny tell me I'm wrong, uh, I got to be wrong. I never said you were wrong. I said Pepper was wrong. No, but overall, it's like you're making these little remarks. Right now you're thinking it. Mm. Where's Rhodes? No. I'm having booking working on Gendeman. What happened? Uh, I said, I said, when I, I said, you know, gave him the address, told him the ID, he, didn't, he did not have his ID when he got How here. How many ways hotel? I'm, I'm, I just emailed him. I'm talking with him on email right now. My mom, yeah. This is why I won't do his podcast. <laughs> All right, Johnny, I'll talk to you later. All right, boys. Bye. See ya. Who goes anywhere in this fucking day and age without ID? <laughs> I don't know. I know. 
right? Thanks, Catholic Joe. You're welcome. You're the only one who really backs me up without ass kissing. Yeah, I am. Uh, Dustin, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Rod. You always talk about how much you like uh, gangster movies and gangster TV shows. Uh, now it's time to act like a gangster and do what you got to do. So put it in hood terms. Quit acting like a bitch and handle your business. Jesus Christ, I, racism is not needed. Ugh. Well, this is the part of the show where my producer was supposed to have a guest up here. I'm just pointing out. Um, you mm. know what? Since we're all playing reality shows these days, I'm going to bring up a couple things. Okay. Chris never does his job. Uh, Catholic Joe's had a couple of male affairs. I'm not supposed to say with who. Oh, you read my blog. Nice. Yes, I read your blog. <laughs> I read your blog every day. I hop up and it's the first thing. <laughs> I'm like, well, look who got lucky last night. DudeEncounters.com. It was me. That's my website. Follow it. <laughs> or is it Dudu Encounters? <laughs> How are we coming around on the Brazilian creep pictures? <laughs> that would be huge. But seriously, I, I don't remember the last time I've left my house without ID. ID. I know it was pre-buildings blowing up. Last time I did was for Halloween. I was a buff baby, and I couldn't fit the ID in my diaper. Uh, yeah. Um, here's Brad. Brad, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ronnie. Thank you for having me on. Uh, oh, that's my job. I asked my question. I, uh, I had a Susie Essman joke I just thought of. Please bear with me. I'm sorry. I wouldn't want to go to her family reunion because I'd be surrounded by a bunch of Essman. All right. Um, do, you think that, sorry, do you think that there's any chance that Fez might want to do those uh, characters that he used to, he used to come in every day, like the Z-Man or whatever? Yeah, I mean, that would be great. And he always agrees to stuff like that. And if he did it, it would be great. For the people that only know Fez from the last couple years, have no idea how great he used to be. Even as far back as like the NEW show, I was thinking I used to spend a good time of that show just fucking rolling back laughing. Just letting him run with stuff and just me cracking up. You know, I would be like sometimes even the Chris Stanley of the show. Kissing ass and fucking rubbing his back and stuff. I, I, I feel like I don't kick, kiss ass. And yet you do. And I heard it also from Dave. Really? Yeah. Dave's talking this shit. You know what his nickname for you is? What's that? Uh-huh. Um, real. Oh, bullshit. I've, we've gotten the screen matches on the goddamn air. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, Dominic, you're on the Run of Fez show. Thanks for taking my call, Ron. It's my job, buddy. Hey, uh, my suggestion, sir, you've done so many outstanding interviews over the years. I mean, you're probably one of the best interviewers that I've listened to. My suggestion would be maybe you consider it's time to move on, create something new, and just dedicate it to exclusive interviews where... Many of us would enjoy that more so than the drama, so to speak. I hate that word, but no, I know basically what it's come. I know. I, I I think at some point that would even bore me, though, to only do that. You know, I mean, I I'm going to tell you the truth. I love being in here with Catholic Joe, even having uh huh hanging around all morning. <laughs> is My name's Chris. Fun. Well, I know, but everyone calls you uh huh. Bullshit. Chris, I start let at. me finish the fucking point that I'm going before you start agreeing Come on, and kissing agree? my ass. I'm agree now, the, can I just make my point here? On other shows, people get to make the points. Okay. So me and Aha were talking Very about this, <laughs> and the fact of the matter is that would get boring as well, just doing the one thing. Um, you work out the road stuff, or is this another thing you dropped the ball on? I'm... <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. It's... it's, it's uh... Booking house. Somebody from Booking has to help him. Yes. They have to call. Yeah, yeah. If that fucker does bring a bomb up here, I'm going to look like a lunatic. (laughs) 
Um, Peter, you're on the Run of Fez show. Peter, your phone's kind of shitty. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, kind of. All right, sorry about that. Um, I'm just curious. Uh, you, you touched on it earlier. How what, what went on last night? Was Fez just not able? Was he just calling you all night long? I mean, what, you said it was. No, we actually had show. to get together with some of the people here, and at any point that we, I don't know whether you've ever broke up with uh, a chick before, and you of broke course. up with that fucking girl. That you're like, oh, they've they're on a whole nother level of how they feel about this than me. You know what I mean? Like, th- there's a guilt that I have that Fez's investment in some of the non-work stuff is beyond what I can comprehend right now, and I do that like. You guys are always asking me about what was the Christmas present that year, yeah, yeah. which I've never brought up because it, it fucking weirded me out. Um, and maybe I should have paid more attention at that point. What I wanted to do is the same thing I always wanted to do, do a really funny, fucking great radio show that's jokes and you remember the the other day when we did the thing and it trended worldwide and everybody was having a ball with it oh, yeah. and laughing about it i feel like that's the kind of things i want to do for the rest of my life the rest of my career and then become an expat and probably belize or wherever some weird fucking country is but i'd love to get into some gun running later in life Let's see that and that. i'm putting away my gun running and and drug smuggling money right now that's awful. You should be running guns. Is this your the opposite thing of just still being the guy? <laughs> no. It's still being a huh because of taking it fucking serious, Chris. I see it. The bosses see it. You're playing a character. You're not being real. Um, Earl, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, buddy. Come yeah. Million bucks. Thanks. Hey, man, I just wanted to remind I know this has been a weird couple of days for you, but... As a listener, I listened to you guys back in the NAW days. I moved down to Virginia. I listened to you guys down here, and I, I love you to death. But remember a couple of weeks back when we were doing Obama's balls? The, yeah. the trending was, dude, you were so excited and just so literally, we could hear how happy you were over the radio. And I, I don't want you to forget that. I know this all this crap with Fed is kind of clouding things over a little bit, but when we hear you genuinely having fun and laughing your ass off, like when, uh, um, Hey, what's his face? Dressed up as as uh, as uh uh-uh. That was funny, man. Listen to you genuinely laugh. Chris, a big jerk. laugh. That was awesome. And Thank I, you, dude. Please don't forget that, man. And I want you to know we're, we're with you wherever you go. We're following. That's the show that I really feel like doing at this point. I don't want to be sincerely and on a reality show. It's fucking embarrassing to me. I don't watch them. Because it's embarrassing to me. Bruce Jenner came in here one day and I refused to talk to him about it. Only talked about the Olympics. Because I feel like he's a guy that did some fucking great things in his life. And then put himself on a, hey everyone, look at my asshole show. And people do like to look at assholes and it's fucking fun for them. But I don't, I, I, that's, kind of, that's the kind of exposure that doesn't interest me. I don't want to do things that don't interest me anymore. Um, here's our buddy John from Mass. You're on the Run of Fest show. Hey guys. Yeah. Buddy, one of the things I got out of yesterday was it sounds like you still appreciate living the dream of the job that's not work, and it really resonates. And I hope whatever you decide to do, we still get to hear you. And the other guy, what's his name? Uh, Chris. They call it Maha. It's, no, it's Chris is the name. I love the other guy, Stanley. too. I hope we still get to hear you in some capacity, buddy. All right? Thanks. Thanks, John. I actually was one of those kids, and I don't even know if kids do this anymore, but I was a fucking corner boy. I was a guy who hung on street corners. Since I was like 11, 12 years old, I would just stand on the corner. My buddies would stand on the corner 
and you'd buzz balls, and then sometimes a cute girl would stop by, and you'd flirt with her, and then when she left, you'd say all the fucking things that you would have done, that you would do, but... And seriously, I'd like to consider that just... I feel like I found my place in life, and I just want to sit around and hang out and buzz balls, and then go like this, well, it's getting a little late, I'm out of here. And that's how much I want to think about the show that I'm doing. I don't want to do more. I'm not overly ambitious. I don't want fucking billboards. I don't give a shit if one show leads into something bigger. Past all that. Did all that when I was younger. But I also don't want to be caught up with every day's a fucking struggle. And I, I, I feel terrible that I haven't been able to help Fez fix whatever the thing that he's going through is. And I felt like I could. And all the people that think they do know weren't there last night. And he's outrageously opposed to us making any kind of change. And I got to make some kind of change. And I would say, oh, I'll just fucking tube this job. I'll just sit here and be a bitch. But he would have no problem with that. That would be fucking fine. Um, Don, you're on the Run of Fez show. Uh, Ron, thanks for fire, my friend. Hey. A uh, couple things for you. Uh, two things I want to I want to get out. Number one, in your radio career, and can you see them come and go? Do you believe maybe Fez is burned out? Um, because it is a long, hard road to be on the radio, and I, I'm gonna let you go because your phone. I'm gonna let you go because your phone's kind of shitty. Yeah, I think he's kind of burnt out. I know when he took his Thanksgiving vacation, he came back in here in worse shape than when he left. The vacation was the worst thing to happen to him. He's been offered to take time for himself. Um, a doctor is offered to write up something uh, for Fez that he would be able to, um, I don't know, take crazy time? I don't know what it's supposed to be called, but some kind of disability, crazy time disability. Doesn't want to do it. Doesn't want to do anything. Thinks it's all a fucking plot to lose him. I think he could still be great at this. What's happening with Rhodes? Uh, he's on his way up. So I see, you know, you know, there's like, a lot of texting. Yeah, I mean, I'm just sitting here texting back and forth, and you're like, yeah, this show blows. <laughs> fucking Ron's back in his thing. Oh, now that asshole's calling me, uh huh, again. No, to Liam Davenport. Who's that? From booking, Liam. Liam Davenport? That's his fucking last name? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, right? Uh, John, you're on the Manifest show. Hey, guys, how's it going? Uh, good. Good. Hey, I know everybody thinks that they have the solution to this problem, but I can tell you from experience, I've been where Fez is at, and I know what it's like dealing with uh, the emotions and the crying and all that fucking bullshit. And the problem is the meds. The side effects from the meds fuck you up so bad, and it wasn't until my life was falling apart until I realized that, and I tapered off all of my meds, and I've never been fucking happier. Everybody's different, but the one solution that I've never heard no one's ever said, hey, Fez, why don't you try going on a holiday? Get off these fucking meds for a few months and see what happens. If he wants but to here's reasons, the difference. Some of it. those meds aren't made to make him feel better. They're for his heart. No, 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 not those. Yeah, not well, that's, the, mo that's like the meds that. that kind of fuck him up as well. Really? You know? Yeah, they, uh, I don't know, he's got diabetes the diabetes medicine. stuff really he's fucks him up. He's got heart medicine, well, and they, they seem to fuck him up. I think he's off the other meds, although I never know. I never know 100%. I never know 100% of anything. Um, here's uh, Ryan in South Plainville. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, buddy. How you doing, brother? Yeah. Listen, Ryan, um, I, I hate to, uh, to even think about this, but, man, if, if, if you let go of Fess, I, I'm afraid that guy's going to kill himself, man. I mean, he's, like, really fucking depressive and, and just like out of it. So, I mean, I'm not saying that it's your fault or nothing like that, but 
I, I can see for myself that if, if, if you happen to let him go, which we don't know if that's what's going to happen or not, we'll see tomorrow. But um, that, that guy's a goner, man. God forbid, seriously. And if it doesn't work out with you, maybe he can go into a Spanish show and make the, you know, the fest show in Spanish. How do I like to take on that Pialine? You know what I mean? Give them a run for their money. Radio War. Yeah. Radio and then the Spanish-American War. We don't know how that ended the first time. Not really. I don't know all the details. We, we beat know, them, right? Yeah, but I know Teddy Roosevelt, the Rough Riders did something. But what exactly happened, I couldn't tell you. I think we were fighting over Cuba or Puerto Rico. Very confusing. You should have taken Cuba, too. It's not even that far away. You thought that your fucking hero Kennedy that you love so much. Rest in peace. You know what I say. What's that? No, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> All right, so how long of a fucking ride is Rhodes? <laughs> it should be a couple minutes. What are you going to bring him into? Uh, I have some uh, music from the that, uh, intro to his podcast. Let's go to Tom. Tom, you're on the Run of Fest show. Hey, you doing, buddy? Yeah. I uh, just want to know, what do you consider the uh, the golden years of the Run of Fest show? Uh, and, and if you could pick your, your perfect lineup of... Uh, of hosts and producers and interns and whatnot, who would they be? Well, I'm not going to go through all of that because that only hurts feelings. Um, but, and, you know, no one ever talks about this. Everyone loves doing a national show. But there is nothing better than that local specialized show. And I don't even think it's something that exists much in the country anymore. Um because all the hosts want to be national and all the the radio stations find it cheaper not to have a local guy. They can just pipe it in. But when you're doing the kind of the show where there's a pothole and all your listeners know exactly what you're talking about, or you say, look, when I get off, let's all go meet at this fucking wing place. And you go there and it's you guys just all fucking hanging out. That is the funnest radio that you can ever do and the last time that i did that kind of radio um sincerely having fun was in new york city with fez where you would you know you pick up the daily news bitch about it you you, you jump on you know all of a sudden the guy who's the article's about calls you up says you don't know what you're talking about that's the really funnest radio and you've never you, you're just texting constantly during the show now. i know i'm yeah. trying to what's going on I'm seeing to see where where Tom is, because I've haven't got anything. All right, he's just he just he's here. Okay, he's in reception. So that's what you're doing instead of fucking being in here, just something, just texting along. Um, but you know the stuff the, the guy's saying. Uh, the guy's a goner without you. Believe me, I worry about it. Um. I worry. And uh, there's been so many times where, like, Fez was the fucking highlight. When I met Fez, I absolutely thought, this is the funniest fucking dude I've ever seen. And he thinks so differently than me. I would never come up with that joke. Here, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to have you start talking, and I'm just going to text constantly. All right, I'll, I'll just put the phone away. Put the fucking phone away, Chris. Done. Joe... Take his goddamn phone away. It's just constant with him now. Uh huh. Put the phone away. Uh huh. My fucking name isn't a uh-huh, hot Joe. All right, you it's, motherfucker. It's, sorry. Uh huh. The way he did that was pretty dead on. It wasn't dead on at all. It was bullshit. Is what it was. He's fucking ball busting. All right, I'm sorry. Uh huh. Mmm. I didn't. That's another one that you told me you were close with. <laughs> no one has respect for you. Uh huh. I understand. You got to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, I do have to get to the bottom of it. I'm sorry, uh-huh. Chris. Uh huh. Stanley. Sorry. I think there that there was a character on the Little Rascals that would just go, uh huh. Sounds like a great character. We need that drop for you. Uh-huh. No, I'm not pulling that drop. <laughs> Someone else can fucking do it. I'll right, pull let, it. Let, <laughs> let's do this though. Let Joe at least do the impression. Uh huh. <laughs> that's from. That's not me. That's a character from uh-huh. Little Rascals. That does remind me of you. I don't know and why don't it would. Like when he says sentences. Like, uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh, baby. 
That's so fucking dead on. I'm going. You're texting again. I have to. I'm the only one here. I have to fucking figure this out. But the photo huh? I don't want to. I don't. I, don't, I, don't, I, I leave the room. I want you to leave the room. Go ahead. You don't have to fucking worry. You can do all that. You can't fucking send somebody down. Then go. But you got to be in the fucking moment. I want to be in the moment. You got Joe over there. I'm right here. Uh huh. All right. Is that you or me? I don't know anymore. You are. Can I say what's happening today? Yeah. Fez doesn't show up, and you fall apart. And that's something you never admit to. It's weird not having Fez here. You need Fez in that fucking hall. You don't want to, but you need him on that <laughs> hall. And that's something that doesn't come up it's at your fucking parties. I was doing a line from a movie. Do you right. know what movie? No. I don't good know. men, you need me on that wall. Well, when you hear Lou Reed, it means uh, that's the end of the show. It was great seeing you, dude. Satellite of love. Yeah, well, I don't grow up on a satellite here. I love it. Tom Rhodes, the one and only. Does anybody need another dirty, poli greedy politician caught with his pants down and money sticking out his hole? <laughs> Remember that Lou Reed song? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, TomRhodes.net Tour dates, listen to his podcast Tom Rhodes Radio Good to see you again I love brother. you Mr. Bennington And uh, I look forward to working with you every day I wish, you know what, I wish we would do your podcast I'm going to do homework I really be... I'm going to do homework I'm gonna, I got 20 years of stories to, to add to the texture of this program If Fez wasn't dead before he is now um, I'll see you guys back in here tomorrow Tom, thanks so much brother Love you Ronnie and uh, that's the end of my show, Donk. Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday through Thursday with Harry, Mark, and John.